We are in the teaching gallery here at the Mildred Lane Kemper Museum at Washington University, and the exhibit on display here is entitled Colonizing the Past, Constructing Race in Ancient Greece and Rome, and it's an exhibit that I curated in tandem with a course I'm teaching right now at WashU. This exhibit is about how artwork, both ancient and modern, has contributed to um, the image of antiquity that exists today um, that is highly racialized without necessarily being obviously racialized, and particularly the way that modern racial categorizations get attributed to the people of the past um, to whom they would basically be completely meaningless. The earliest objects in the exhibit go to possibly the 6th century BCE, and the most recent object that we have in it is from the 1960s. The majority of the pieces in this exhibit come from the early modern period, from the 16th and 17th centuries, particularly the Renaissance, when there was a massive explosion of interest in the ancient world, and especially in the cultures of Greece and Rome. And what we see are artists who are depicting the people of Greece and Rome to look like Europeans because these are European artists. And this is a period when ideas about race tied to skin color are in their infancy. They're starting to be developed, but they're not quite as universal as they are today. It's actually an open question exactly whether something that we would call race existed in ancient Greece or really in ancient Rome either. We know that these were societies that had xenophobia, that had oppression, that had imperialism. What we don't see is a particularly strong emphasis on things like skin tone as the kind of major categorizing factor for separating the people of the world. And in fact, there's certainly no attempt to group all people who share the same skin tone into one group. So the idea that white people exist or black people exist is just not something that we see in antiquity. As far as the actual racial makeup of either ancient Greece or Rome, it's a little bit hard to say. I think we can say safely that there were people who had a range of skin tones. These are societies that are part of the ancient Mediterranean, which is a complex, heterogeneous culture where there are just numbers of different people moving around and interacting with each other. And it's very likely that there's really not one skin tone that you would see in either of these civilizations. And that the way that they're categorizing people is not going to be based on that particular um, criterion. It's important for us to study the history of race in antiquity because it can be really helpful, I think, for understanding modern race to just see how different things can be. Often, even when we understand that race is a social construct, it's not something that's based in biology, it still feels somewhat inherent and innate to our world. And in reality, it's not. And it's easier to understand those differences when we have a stark comparison to make. And then also, I think it's important to study what people actually thought in the ancient world, because for most of the history of scholarship on the ancient world, you have scholars imputing their own racial biases into their interpretations of the ancient world. And for us who are now trying to work against that and get past that, we need to understand what those biases are and how they're shaping their interpretation of the information that was available to them. Colonizing the Past, Constructing Race in Ancient Greece and Rome is open to the public and will be on display until December 27th. For more information, you can visit the Kemper's website.